Hi there. Welcome to Pod Club. Wow. So this week we have reached a new World Where Living Works podcast record. That's right. Our interview with Sam Brinton from The Trevor Project now officially has the most listens in the first 24 hours of any of our episodes from across series one and two. We had so many comments from listeners around the world telling us about their advocacy work to support the introduction of anti-conversion therapy legislation. Many of our listeners were shocked that this was still happening in their own countries, so we're really pleased that hearing from Sam means they can now join this fight for LGBTIQ rights wherever they live and work. We also heard from several people who've reflected on Sam's statement about safe spaces. Sam said in the interview, just because you call it a safe space doesn't mean it is a safe space for someone. Now, that's really resonated with a lot of our listeners who are now reflecting on how they can check in with people, people they train, people they work with, on what's needed for that safe space to be authentic for the receiver, not the person setting up the space. Many of you recommended seeking out local LGBTIQ plus organisations to support and learn from in your local context. Now, that's a really great idea. Quite a few of our listeners referred to an earlier interview from Series 1 with Joe Ball, CEO of Switchboard Victoria. They made particular reference to when Joe was talking about the need for LGBTIQA plus specific helplines, as well as training up mainstream support services to be safer spaces. Here's a reminder of what Joe had to say about that. You know, I think that we always need to ask ourselves whether it's working. I think that's really important in this space and then to be driven by evidence-based and self-reflexive practice. And, you know, one of the big questions is why have an LGBTIQA plus phone line? You know, there are other services that LGBTIQA plus people can call and do call um, in Australia. And why have a specific phone line? And I think the world over there is LGBTIQA plus phone lines. And actually, they've been the cornerstone of the service sector for our community. And I think it speaks to the needs within our community around social isolation and rejection and the need to form community that is not about your direct family, but about finding chosen family. There was a recent piece of research in Australia called LGBTI Lives in Crisis, which was a research done with our lifeline in Australia and Q-Life, the service we work with, um, that we're a partner in. And one of the things they found is that, you know, people in our community want choice around, they want a specialist LGBTIQA plus phone line, and they also want to use mainstream services where they're culturally safe. And there's a lot of work to be done in Australia about making other phone lines culturally safe. And unfortunately, way too often on our phone line, we actually hear about people having a bad experience on other helplines because the individual phone worker hasn't been trained in cultural safety for our community. And when people are so vulnerable to be misgendered and even when they're corrected, not that they're gendered to not be accepted on the phone line, you know, it's such a terrible time to be sort of, I guess, fighting with someone who, who should be helping you. So, you know, in our work at Switchboard, we, you know, try and where possible to capacity build with, within other phone line services. And that's one of our, our missions there because we know that our community needs to be able to use both um, and all mainstream and specialists. But we do know that people want to talk to people who understand and, and they want to feel that connection and that's really important and it makes a huge difference when someone rings up and they just know that that person is LGBTIQA+. Plus and they don't need to have those basic educative conversations. Thank you so much to all of our listeners for your feedback and a huge thank you to Sam for such a thought-provoking and educational interview. Keep those comments coming and stay tuned for the next episode of World Where Living Works, available soon on all your usual podcast players. See you in Pod Club.